Hello friends, welcome to Shikshaarthi. In this video, we'll be talking about three-digit multiplications. So let's start. So we shall be dividing this session broadly into three parts. So in the first part, we'll be focusing on the mother method of three-digit multiplications. In the second part, we'll be talking about, we'll be practicing some, maybe we'll be talking about some applications of three-digit multiplications along with the practice. And in the third part, we'll be talking about how to check the answers of the examples that we would have taken. While doing so, our focus in the first two parts will be on accuracy and the remaining, the latter two parts would be on accuracy and speed both. Yes. So let us take, I'm imagining this as a three digit number. I'm taking a three digit number like ABC to be multiplied with another three digit number, which is DEF. And then I'm doing the same thing as I've done in my earlier videos. This, the method still remains the same. So when I talk about the mother method, whether I talk about two digits or I talk about three digits or I talk about four digits, the modus operandi would remain the same, the mode of operation. How do we go ahead? So I'm drawing three columns here. I'm assuming that I'm drawing three columns here. So how do I start? First, I take only one column, which is just like saying A into D. AD means A into D. Then I'm taking the, the first two columns. When I take the first two columns, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to cross multiply and add. So AE means A into E plus B into D. Now when I'm taking all the three columns here, you need to be attentive because here is what discriminates between a three digit and a two digit multiplication. So when I'm taking three digits, three columns, that means I'm taking all the three digits. I'll multiply the extremities, add them with the middle portion. I'll repeat. So what am I supposed to do? A F A into F plus C D C into D plus B into E followed by the remaining two columns, remaining two columns. So the, the way of doing this and this remains the same and the way of doing this and this remains the same. Right. So when I'm taking the remaining two columns, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to multiply and add, which is B into F plus C into E followed by the final column, which is C into F. Please relate. If I would have given you a question like one, 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 into one, 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 which is just like saying a triple one whole square. What is the answer for this? The answer is already written here. One followed by a two, followed by a three, followed by a two, followed by a one. Yeah, let us take some more examples here. So while I'm taking more examples here, the focus would be to learn how to apply the mother method. The focus would be that. Okay. So let me take an example. Like if I had to multiply a two, three, four with, let's say a four, five, six. So I'll assume that I have drawn three columns here. And how do I go ahead? First, I'll take only one column. Taking one column means what? 4 into 2, which is an 8, which is the engine of the train. As discussed earlier also. So the first column is the engine of the train in which the answer will be written in its original form. So original form means if I would have got an 18 here, I would have written 18 as it is. But now talking about the coaches that would follow. So now in the first coach after the engine, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to cross multiply and add. So how much is 2 into 5? 10 plus 12 makes it a 22. Next, what am I supposed to do? 2 into 6 is a 12. 12 plus 16 is a 28. 28 and 15 is a 43. Followed by 18 plus 20. Followed by a 24. Now you would have seen that there is something that is common to all my videos. And that common part is I do not write down separately to add. For example, I could have written this as 5 into 2 is a 10, 4 into 3 is a 12. So 2 plus 0 is a 2 and 1 plus 1 is a 2. If I do this, I'm adding no doubt that I'm adding. But then I'm 
you know becoming more vulnerable in terms of taking more time to calculate so these methods will help you only when along with this you develop an art of doing calculations orally and believe me that you can do it and the best way of doing it is do it right okay so coming back so for the final answer what am i supposed to do for the final answer i am supposed to come down from the right hand side to the left hand side so while i am doing so 4 comes down as it is 2 plus 8 makes it a 10 so 0 comes down and 1 gets added here now in 10 the units digit is 0 and the tens digit is 1 so it is the tens digit which gets carried over to the next subscript so i hope you re recall my earlier videos talking about the subscript format if you don't please watch my earlier videos this gives you a reason to watch okay so now this becomes 4 4 plus 3 is a 7 4 plus 2 6 8 2 10 10 we'll take one more example and this time we are going to take a bigger one so when i am taking a bigger example i'll take an example like 6 7 8 let's say multiplied with a 7 8 9 now before i begin with this i would insist that we don't require special methods of multiplying we just do not require because special methods i need to remember them mother methods do i need to remember them as well but there is only one method with the help of which i can target as many questions as possible but if i am looking for special methods i can't afford to forget the mother method so in that case you'll end up mugging up so many methods and mugging is not good for health mental health so coming back we don't require any special methods the generic method itself will take care of your anxiety so how much is 6 into 7 42 now as discussed earlier this is the engine of the train in which the answer has to be written as such now talk about the remaining coaches now these are just the assumed lines of separation so if you practice every day for half an hour at least there will be a point in time wherein you remove all these things these things are just to learn or to make you learn okay so next is 48 and 49 that makes it a 97 so again i'm not adding but i'm doing calculations mentally and believe me all of us can do that okay next is a 54 and a 56 so 54 and a 56 makes it 110 110 and a 56 and 110 and a 56 can i say is a 166 yes followed by remaining two remaining two means i have already taken one column then i have taken two columns then i have taken all the three columns remaining two columns which means what 63 and 64 followed by a 72 so the answer is 2 now the moment i say 11 so you would have seen that i am just you know hinting i am not writing i'll come back once again what was i hinting at 2 comes down 7 plus 7 is a 14 14 4 gets down 1 gets carried here so this makes a 13 13 plus 6 is a 19 1 gets carried here i was just hinting carry over 1 or carry the digit so this becomes a 17 when i carry over 1 from here 17 plus 7 is a 24 so 4 2 gets carried here 9 plus 2 11 Eleven and forty-two makes it a fifty-three. Yeah. Now, as a special case, so now in few minutes we'll take the same examples to check whether the answer is correct or not. So, so picking up examples from here only. Now, if had somebody given me a six four five whole square. Now this becomes a special case wherein this number ends with a five. Do I need to learn a method separately for this? No, I don't. Now, what will I do in this case? You are supposed to do the same. So, in this case, it is just like saying an ABC multiplied with another ABC. So, what will I get? I'll get a square followed by a 2ab, followed by what? Followed by a b square plus 2ac, followed by a 2bc, followed by a c square. 
please refer to my video on three digit squares. So three digit squares are nothing but had I known the mother method of finding out or calculating a three digit number, multiplying a three digit number into another three digit number, I can might as well calculate the square also even if I did not know this. How? Now please look here carefully. Now I am subscribing a school of thought or subscribing to a school of thought which says I will not even write it in this manner. I could have written 645 into a 645. Okay. But what am I going to do here? I will just take, imagine that I have taken only one digit. One digit means what? 6 into 6. Then 6, when I am taking two columns, I am supposed to multiply them with a 2. Which is just like saying what? 6 into 4 is 24, 48. Followed by multiply the extremes. Multiply the extremes. Which is just like saying 6 into 5 into 2. Which is 6 into 5 is 30, right? 30 into 2 is 60. 60 plus 4 into 4. Which is a 76. Followed by the product of these with a 2. Which is a 40. Followed by a 25. Now time to check whether all these examples that I had taken. Whether the answers are correct or not. For that. I have already discussed a method earlier which is by the name of digital roots which I had discussed in my video wherein I had talked about how to multiply a two digit with another two digit. So refer to that as well. So here the digital root is what? 3. Here the digital root is 3. 3 into 3 should give me a digital root as 9. So if in the answer the digital root is just like saying sum of all the digits in the answer if it doesn't give me a 9. That means the answer is definitely incorrect. If it gives me a 9, that means the answer should be correct. So 3 plus 3, 6 plus 2, 8 plus 1. The answer should be correct. Let's refer to the, the case here. How much is the digital root for 234? The digital root for 234 is 9. The digital root for this is what? 6. The digital root finally should be a 9. Why? Because 9 into 6 is a 54. 54 means 5 plus 4 which is a 9. Let us see whether we are getting a 9 here or not. 4 plus 7, 11. 11 plus 6, 17. 17 plus 1, 18. 18 means 9 because 1 plus 8 is a 9. The answer should be correct. Yes? Finally, now this you would check it for yourself whether the answer is correct or not. Let's finally check and apply this in case of perfect squares. So, now when I am adding the digits here, I am talking about adding the digits of 645. So 645, when I am finding out the digital roots, keep on adding the digits till the time you get a single digit number. So 6 plus 4 is a 10, 10 plus 5 is a 15, 1 plus 5 is a 6. 6 square is a 36. So the digital root of this square is a 36 which means a 9. That means the answer of the square of 645 should give me what? A digital root as 9. Let us see whether the answer is correct or not. So 5 plus 2, 7. 7 plus 6, 13. 13 plus 1, 14. 14 plus 4, 18. 18 means 1 plus 8, 9. I am getting a 9 here. That means this answer should be correct. As discussed in the earlier videos, here also I am going to apply the same logic. So if you want to come up to a certain video of mine, it is suggested that you should watch all the videos because there would be something that is common to all. Right? Find out that common thing. So, final thing for today. Had this been a 6.45 whole square, what would have been the answer? I mean, if I forget for the time being, what would have been the answer? And if I simply go on to the option choices and check for which answer gives me a digital root as 9, that should give me a fair chance of saving time yeah focus on this finally for today food for thought so now when I say food for thought please be very attentive to listen what is the maximum and the minimum value that I can get here in the engine the maximum or the minimum value or and the minimum value that I can get here maximum and the minimum value that I can get in this compartment same maximum and minimum value that I can get here and the maximum and the minimum value that I can get here. Meaning thereby, how many questions have I given to you? I have given you 10 questions. Yeah. 
So if you feel that you learnt something today and it was really knowledgeable, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And do not forget to switch on the bell icon to receive further updates. Thank you so much. Until next time we meet, goodbye.